I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of you for taking off time to gather here today. Uh, I would like to also like to thank all of you, those who have uh, kept time, and I know you have a lot of pressing demands, especially on Friday. I wouldn't like to blame anybody, but only to encourage that uh, those who are on the way should be, if you have their contacts, please let them participate because as we move around the parliament, as we interact, there have been many questions about this social protection. Of course, when we talk about social protection, you get to understand it much more than what we are saying today. What is very familiar to people is a grant for the older person, but that is just a component. And we thought it would not be possible for us to be talking to each and everybody in a different manner. And it was very wise for the members of parliament to have asked for this social protection workshop, and we thought it was not a, it was worth it uh, for us as a minister to organize it. Ladies and gentlemen, despite our undeniable economic successes, the extent of poverty and vulnerability in Uganda remains a serious challenge, particularly among the elderly, people with disabilities, and other vulnerable groups. These terms like vulnerable groups, you are familiar, but just to remind you, we are talking about those people who can easily be taken up by shocks of risks of economy or other issues. People who are disadvantaged in many ways. The, uh, the children, the orphans, the elderly, persons with disability. We refer to them as vulnerable groups. More than 7.5 million Ugandans live still in poverty. While in Karamoja, the poverty rate is at 75%. The challenges for our senior citizens, in particular, are very clear. Almost 72% of the older people head household, meaning they have responsibility to provide for others, often people, uh, especially children. In fact, about 2.1% million children in Uganda are under the care of older persons. And I think this should be clear. When we talk about older persons, there's one time when I was presenting in Parliament, and somebody was asking, how are issues of older persons linked to children? And I'm sure this work should be, would be able to answer such questions. You note that many of our children today, because of the HIV AIDS scourge, have remained in the hands of older persons. And the youth, because of the economic factors, they run to town and leave children under the care of older persons. So there is a very strong linkage between older persons and uh, the children. However, the majority of older persons live in rural areas where poverty is very high. Economic opportunities are limited, and hero health is very common. Indeed, I'm aware that 64.5% of our senior citizens have a disability. As you age, you get a disability in one way or another. It may not be physical disability, but you may have uh, seeing, uh, sight problems or another form of disability. So when we are talking about older persons, we also talk about issues of disability. Yet nearly 93% of the older persons who receive no pension or another form of income security. Because you note that our economic structure, there are very few people in the formal sector. And the type of pension that we have today caters for those in the formal sector. So the majority of those older persons don't receive pension. When these factors combine, many of our country's senior citizens experience poverty social exclusion, discrimination, and life without this dignity or income security. Honorable members, is this and the president said in his speech at the, at the launch of the senior citizens grant during the International Day for Older Persons, October 1st, 2011, and I want to quote, all older people have faced these challenges alone for too long. 
The NRM government recognizes that as people reach old age, best income security is critical to their well-being. Dignity and their continued participation in the social economic development of their communities. The government, therefore, is determined to empower older people and ensure that the income security and all forms of neglect and abuse of older persons are addressed. End of quote. It is therefore this, uh, for this reason that for over the next three years, my ministry will, with the support of development partners, implement two pilot programs. The details of these programs will be able to understand. The Vulnerability Family Support Grant and the Senior Citizens Grant. The Senior Citizen Grant is designed to reduce old age poverty by providing a minimum level of income security to all older people. However, this program is not only about older people. Senior, senior, senior citizens grants have been shown to increase access to health and education services amongst the entire families and have also shown to have a significant impact on child nutrition and development because of other older people tend to invest their entitlement in meeting their grandchildren's needs. That when you give money to older person, you may think that uh, it is the older person, and if you have that mentality that older persons have overlived their usefulness. This money does not only impact on their lives, but it helps also the children to improve their nutrition and education. In other words, that when you provide money for the older person, you are also addressing other multiple effects that would happen without it. It has been found in some of the studies, and uh, my technical officers will bear me out here, that like in South Africa, all of pensioners, people, uh, children living with the pensioners, have improved their nutrition, and the children there are about three uh, to four centimeters taller than those families that don't receive these pensions. This is a research that has been put forward, and we are yet to compare with what will happen here in Uganda. Uh, where, and where older people are able to continue working, senior citizen grants support them by providing necessary investments to start small businesses and to hire additional labor. You see, we have two categories of older persons. Those who are economically inactive, this grant is very useful to them. But there are those older persons who are still economically active, but they have constrained labor. So when you provide that bit of grant, you provide them with some ability to hire additional labor and do some small businesses. So when you look at this grant, you are looking at two categories of older persons. The economically inactive, those who don't have anything to do, but they are left out there, and those who are still economically active. Senior citizens grants also empower older people and their families once, once again participate in community life and become active and productive members of the communities. It is disheartening that we all move towards the old age. But before we get there, we don't think of being excluded from the community life. When you have nothing to offer, people tend to neglect you, and that is being insecure. So we must provide, uh, prevent this. Honorable members, direct income support programs such as senior citizen grants, as, a, as much as more than just about achieving sustained poverty reduction, and inclusive economic development programs, such as senior citizen grants, are the most fundamental expressions of citizenship and of the relationship between the government and its people. You see, those who have studied state formation and the roles of state know that a state that ceases to provide for the welfare of its people becomes irrelevant and redundant. Where you see a state that is not bothered about its citizens, 
then that state ceases to have any meaning. And these grants are a one way to express our state relates with its people. Honorable members, whether in informal or informal service, it is undisputable that all senior citizens of this country contributed in one way or another to its development. So when you live today and you look at yourself very active, you may think Uganda started today. But somebody else must have made Uganda rich where we are getting it. But here sometimes we forget. That is why this program is very important for us also to remember those who have been contributing to this country. It is therefore only fair that we take steps to both express our gratitude to their past and ongoing efforts and honor the constitutional commitment. Provision of income security to vulnerable groups reflects a society's traditional social values for protecting the vulnerable. This is perhaps one of the reasons why senior citizens grants have been so successful in Africa. They are the modern expression of the traditional values of care and respect for the elderly that have always existed in our societies. One of the African leaders, and I don't want to mention because I know, made a very powerful statement which I want to bring out again. He said, we are, I am who I am because we are. And since we are, therefore I am. I am who I am because we are. Since we are, therefore I am. That is to emphasize that you cannot live in isolation, but you live because of others. And this is what happens in the African setting. Uh, of course, there are many challenges and economic hardships that people, uh, older persons face. Direct income support programs underwrite the solidarity and collective effort which is required to achieve national, social, and economic transformation. Of course, when you talk about transformation, social and economic transformation, you are not talking about infrastructures. You are not talking about the roads. You are talking about social economic transformation. So by transforming the lives of the people, that is the real social economic transformation. Honorable members, provision of these types of programs to vulnerable groups, such as the elderly, is one of the few ways in which government policy is mostly tangibly felt by individuals, families, communities, and electorates at large. In this, this is a program, this program has been described by some of the, uh, as one of the best government programs that the government has ever introduced because it directly reaches out and touches the people. As a result, my ministry is facing increasing demand for a more rapid rollout within, uh, within the 14 pilot districts, as well as demand from political leaders across all parties to extend the senior citizens' grant to new districts. Wherever you go, uh, the whole of last week I was in Karamoja with the first lady, and I went to Sorota as well. But there are pressing demand where people are saying, when do you roll out this program? As a ministry, we would have even loved to roll out this program tomorrow. But we may not have that ability because of the financial constraint. And this type of program requires what we call political will rather than technical concern. Because there are many competing demands in this country. And the politicians or policy makers will look at these demands from their own way, the angles they are putting on, the specs they are putting on. It is not until we have a political commitment that we can have this program roll out. Indeed, the NRM and the major political parties have clearly committed themselves to implementing the senior citizen grant in their respective manifestos. When you read the manifesto of NRM, you will get the rollout for the older person's grant. I also had an opportunity to read the one of FDC, and I saw something about senior citizens' grant. It is open information. I have not read the one of DP, but we are implementing what is really in many of your manifestos. This brings me to the focus of our meeting today. 
the role of the political leadership in fulfilling the manifesto commitment through the expansion of the senior citizen grant scheme beyond the 14 districts. Honorable members, my ministry recently sent a delegation of ministers and MPs to visit two countries that have established a national senior citizens grant scheme, that is Lesotho and South Africa. It is clear from these and other countries that such programs can only succeed when they have the support of the national politicians. Therefore, the success and the national scale up of the senior citizens grant is highly dependent on your support. Your support will send a strong message of the commitment of all Ugandan political parties to support all Ugandans to share the national progress and therefore earn Uganda's, uh, Uganda place as a progressive middle income country. Together, I am confident that we can achieve the expansion of the National Senior Citizens Grant. I, am fa I firmly believe that no other initiative would respond as effectively to the needs and the demands of the electorate in their challenging economic times more directly and tangibly or demonstrate our commitment to delivering services which really can make an impact on the lives of every Ugandan, young and old, than the Senior Citizens Grant. I would like to once again thank you for your support and encourage you to work together tirelessly in pursuit of the expansion of the income security to Ugandan senior citizens. You, you, with your support, enthusiasm, and political energy, I firmly believe that this will be an historical achievement within our reach. And I want to call upon everybody that before we leave this meeting today, we come out with the concrete ways of really ensuring that the senior citizens grant reach every constituency of this country. You can only do this by sitting down, and we believe that for us to be able to communicate with you, when you leave this place, if you are put in place, I don't want to preempt your thinking, but if you put in place a way we can communicate between the ministry and parliament, it will be the best way to reach us. Thank you very much for God and my country. I declare the workshop open.